Hello and welcome to the 8th video in a series of game development tutorials on how to make your own visual novel style game in Unity. In this tutorial we'll cover enhancing our sequence with some sound effects. Remember to subscribe, click the notification bell and you can stay up to date with every tutorial I upload to this series. Feel free to leave a comment or drop a like as well. I have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you can also find all the scripts and assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now, on with the tutorial. So, we spoke about sound effects, and so far we have dealt with some sound, and that's just background music. But what we need to do now is use sound effects to our advantage. We need to be able to trigger them at certain points in a script. It's really easy to do. So, how do we start this? Well, firstly, we're going to need some sound effects. So, let's go down here to our uh, assets window audio and in here instead of going into BGM let's right click create folder and we'll just put effects so any kind of effects that we use in the game whether it's like voice sound effects whether it's an explosion or whether it's clicking or creaking or anything like that will go in this particular folder and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop two audio files one is girl gasp one is girl sigh and as always, you can get these for free if you go to the pinned comment, click the link in there, and that is also in the description. Head over there and you can download these assets for free. So it's all good and well having them in our game. How do we use them effectively? Well, best thing to do is if we have a game object which specifically controls sound effects and also gives us the opportunity to add more and more as we go through. So what we'll do is we'll go to game object, Go to create empty and we'll just call this one sound effects and right click on sound effects now and go to create empty and we will just have this one as literally what the files say so in this case girl gasp and hold control press d and that's duplicated it and let's rename it to girl sigh Next thing we need to do is drag and drop these two audio files onto their respective game object. So girl gasp onto there, girl sigh onto there. Now, if we press play now, both of these sounds will play at the same time, which we don't really want, but let's see what it sounds like when it loads. There we go. So hopefully you would have heard that right there. What we need to do is turn these off. So over here, you'll see something called play on awake. You can untick that and the same with girl gasp. Now, one thing I do want to do is um, where did I put our audio? It was right there, wasn't it? So let's now drag sound effects onto audio. There we go. So now we have a proper parent and child hierarchy of all our audio in one single go. So let's now go to BGM and I'm actually going to turn the volume down a little bit on this because I think it's too a bit too loud, especially if we want to hear these sound effects and make sure that they're OK. So I'm going to turn it down to about there. OK, so we have the sound effects all set up. What do we need to do next? Well, we need to go into our script that we wrote that controls all of our current game. So if we go into scripts, scene one, and go into this script here for the event, what we're going to do is we are going to declare those two variables. Firstly, let's have uh, let's actually go down a couple of lines, and we'll have the first one a serialized field, and basically this gives us a way to enable us to interact with this particular script and this variable in the inspector panel without it being public, like we have done here. But again, these will become apparent why they're public a little later on in this series anyway. So next, what we need to do is declare this as an audio source. Capital A, capital S. And the first one we will have as girl psi, semicolon. And then we'll do the same again. Audio source. And we'll have this one as girl gasp. So we're not going to use the girl gasp one in this tutorial. We're just going to use girl sigh. But we're setting ourselves up ready for the future so we have more uh, to play around with. So now if we scroll down a little bit more, 
we have this section here. And remember where we put this, this is where our text function will go in future tutorial. That will come into play in the next tutorial. But what we need to do right now is we need to time our psi effect with what is appearing on screen. So this particular text box dot set active true is when it appears on screen. So what we'll do is we will play the girl psi sound effect when it appears on the screen. So below here we'll say girl psi dot play. Oh close bracket, semicolon, and save. So let's go back into Unity. We'll quickly let it compile. And what should happen now is that we should have everything play as normal. And as soon as the text appears on screen of what Kasumi is saying, she will sigh, therefore giving us more, you know, in-depth interaction and with the game. You get what I mean. It just feels a bit more real. So hopefully we should see this load and play just fine. And then we'll get around to the second one. So far, so good. Okay. So, has anyone noticed what we didn't do there? Here's a nice lesson for you. Anyone? Yeah, you got it right. Jimmy didn't assign the variable. So remember when I said the serialized field allows us to control it here, just like a public does? That's where we went wrong. So, these sound effects that we created here, let's drag and drop them now. Almost like you could say what happened there was scripted, wasn't it? Mind the pun. Uh, girl gasp in there. So yeah, both of them in there. Now, here's a neat little trick. I think I may have explained it in this series before, but we can tell where this all went wrong. Because if you look down here at the bottom, we have something written in red. And if we go to the console, we can see exactly what's gone wrong. Value cannot be null. In other words, it can't be empty. It can't be nothing because we didn't assign the variable. So let's clear that. Go back to project, press play. And now, Everything will function as intended. Yeah. There we go. She was supposed to be here. And then Haruka slides in. And what we will do actually, before we go any further, is let's actually have the gasp play. I think that's probably good for this tutorial to actually have that gasp play because the next line of text is gonna be, oh, Haruka, I didn't see you there. So Kasumi is gasping. It's like, oh gosh, you startled me kind of thing. Uh, so at the very end, we will say girl gasp dot play. Open close bracket, semicolon and save. And as I said, there's a multitude of things that you can do with sound effects. We're going to add loads of different ones. But the key thing to note here is how this is all playing in a sequence. And that sequence will become really apparent in next tutorial anyway. Uh, so let's head back into Unity, let it compile, all good. So now we should have the same thing when we press play. Assume we will gasp, the text won't change obviously because we haven't set that yet, but we've had the sound effect set up for the gasp from Kasumi as if we were changing our text box over. So let's see all this play out normally. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so it was a little bit a little bit early there, but that's something that we change within the sequence anyway. And as I said, sequencing is really, really important. So next tutorial, what we're going to cover is something which is going to be not tricky, but there is a lot of kind of back and forth with it. And what that is, is working a bit more with our text to make it scroll across the screen, i.e. we have it appear letter by letter at whatever speed we want it to. Uh, you know, if we want to appear instantly, that's fine. We've already got that. But if we want it to scroll and appear letter by letter like it's being said across the screen, that is exactly what we're going to do. And that is, it's a lot of fun to do. Uh, but as I said, it's going to require quite a bit of scripting, which can be a bit tricky in the, in this sense so early on in the series. But don't worry, I will guide you through everything. And as I said earlier, if you want any of these assets that we've got, the scripts, they're in the pinned comment, click the link, go to the description, you can get it right there. Uh, remember to subscribe though, and click on that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series, because believe me, there is a lot of fun things still to come in this series. 
and I will see you next time.